Hi there and welcome. There has been an update to Joint Optimal Pro uh, tool, which I would like to talk about right now. What new functionality do we have in this script? Let me show you really quickly. I'm going to show you uh, new features one by one. We have these two new buttons, uh, add, remove one joint on selected curve. I'm going to select the curve. And then I'm going to start pressing the plus button. Pam, 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 pam. And you see that uh, it's going to add uh, several joints. And here the same. And of course, minus will remove these joints. But you see, essentially, it kind of adds uh, new joints and uh, makes them stick to the curve that you created, that you selected. And here it's uh, very important to mention that it, it, uh, it distributes uh, joints based on the uh, CVs or points positions on the curve. For example, in this curve, you see there is, uh, if I create a new curve, there is an uh, uneven distribution between uh, points. And if I add uh, joints here, you see these uh, new joints are going to be added based on these uh, CVs positions. So essentially we're going to have more joints on the left because there'll be uh, more points there. Of course, if you want to, to achieve an um, even distribution, you need to rebuild the curve. So you can select the curve, go to curves, uh, use rebuild functionality, let's say 10 points. It's going to give you 10 evenly spread points. And then if you're going to start adding new joints, they're going to be added uh, evenly. All right, the next uh, button, which is connected to uh, this functionality, snap to curve. So what does it do? Let's say we have this uh, new curve of joints, uh, joint chain. But maybe I want to edit it, maybe I want to offset it slightly, maybe, yeah, maybe this way. So maybe essentially I want to uh, slide the joints uh, through the along the curve. And you see right here we have a situation where joints kind of right now off relative to the curve. So we can select the joint chain, then shift select the curve, snap to curve, and it's going to snap the position of the joints to the curve, just to make it more precise. And it snaps it to the closest position of the curve, snaps the joint to the closest position of the curve. The next uh, option that we have this uh, function was added uh, uh, on request from my users, uh, from feedback. And it's very useful for um, uh, editing joints while skinning. So let's say uh, you have a situation when you have skin. But then you see that you have to edit the joints. Joint maybe offset them, uh, change the position slightly, and so on and so forth. There is a tab, uh, Tools. And uh, here it is um, uh, move skin joints mode, enter and exit. I'm going to press enter. We essentially enter the uh, editing mode of skin joints. It means that we turned off the entire skinning on entire geometry. Now you can move the joints uh, freely. You can uh, rotate them as you wish. Uh, maybe you want to offset it here. And then after you finish, you're going to press the exit button. It's going to reapply the skinning. And uh, the joints will be updated. Uh, the skin will be updated. But you may agree that uh, it may not be very convenient uh, to edit joints when you also have uh, mirrored joints. Maybe uh, you even have some kind of animation and uh, you're just forced to edit joints. For that, uh, there is a mirror connection function. I'm going to press it. There is new window opened. Here, essentially, we uh, specify from which side we want to transfer uh, weights to which side, transfer position rather, to which side. So in this case, from L side, we want to transfer positions to R side. Of course, you may have a different naming convention. Here I have L and R, but you may have like left, uh, right, or something else. So you specify this naming convention, this proper naming convention uh, here. Next, uh, these settings are the same settings um, as in the mirror joints function. Essentially, it's the same as uh, 
uh, setting joints to um, setting mirror function for joints to behavior or orientation. For example, it's rather useful for Unreal, Skeleton, and so on and so forth. Next, we select the joints. I selected the entire joint hierarchy, so all the joints in this uh, hierarchy. And then I can press rotation, so essentially I connect by rotation and translation. For translation, uh, by default, we have this XYZ uh, turned on. So these channels are inversed. And now if I, let's say, rotate the finger, you'll see that the fingers on the other side will be, the finger on the other side will be rotated as well. So essentially the script finds uh, uh, the other side relative to uh, the one that you've selected. In this case, we've selected the left side and uh, the script found the right side. And of course, if you have the same names, it's going to work as well. Next, we're going to enter the editing mode. And we can freely offset and change the position, just uh, make some corrections if we see it, uh, it uh, necessary, we deem it necessary. Maybe I want to move it like this. Uh, move it like this. Uh, yeah, something similar. And you can see that the opposite side behaves in the same way, in the same precise way. Then I'm going to press exit mode. It's going to reapply re the skinning. And then uh, after you uh, finished, you're going to select these joints, right click, uh, select uh, and right click the translates and rotates, and then break connections. This is just to remove unnecessary connections from the script. Another important uh, note here, if you're going to use some kind of scripts for, let's say, joint orientation, so essentially, if you're gonna, uh, in the editing mode, if you're gonna fix and change the joint orientation, it will be necessary to remove a joint orient later from the joints after you've finished, from both the right side and the left side. Otherwise, the script just will not behave properly. To do it, you just select the joint hierarchy and then press the orient uh, to rotate function just to transfer essentially orient values to rotation channels and do the same for the other side. And you should do it before you change the orientation of the joints. And then after you've finished, maybe after you've uh, exited the um, editing mode, you can press rotate to orient again just to transfer the rotations to orient values. Hello and welcome. There has been a new update to the Joint Optimal Pro application tool, version 4.1. Despite the tool being only the version 4.1, it actually has a lot of new features uh, and some serious updates. So let's take a look. I would say the most important and the most uh, considerable feature is uh, that the process of making joints was completely reworked. The reason behind it is the following. In uh, game skeletons, so in skeletons for game engines, you may often encounter the following problem. Let's say you have uh, a skeleton, like this one on the screen right now. Then we group it. And maybe for some reason we need to maybe change the scale, or maybe it has a scale, something like that. And if we start just create joints inside, let's say, yeah, create a joint inside, then, then parent it to the arm. And we parent it just through this uh, the regular way. You'll see that we'll have uh, transform. <clears throat> Since we have uh, scale, so it kind of compensates the scale of the joint. It has its own values, its own rotations, translates, and it's very dirty approach. Thus, I have a different approach of making joints to get rid of this unnecessary transform. Let's select the joint, then press the inside joints button. As you can see, the new joint was created, but it doesn't have any additional transforms. It's very clean. It has only translates, as it should have. Thus, all the tools actually account for that. They take this into account, like adding joints, removing joints, uh, parent sequence, uh, true and parent functions. Uh, all of these uh, uh, functions work properly with this approach. Mm -hmm. 
What else do we have? There is also true parent and true unparent uh, buttons. For example, let's say you need to repair this joint to this joint. Let me, let's say I'm going to create uh, a few more joints. Maybe I need something like this, the following joint chain. If you use the standard um, tools, uh, Maya tools, you'll have issues with the additional transforms. But if you select these joints and use true parent function, you see this joint is going to be reparented without any additional uh, values, additional transforms. And remember, the entire skeleton is in the group and it has some scale values. If I use true unparent, of course, it's going to unparent the joint. It's going to go outside the hierarchy, outside the group without any uh, scaling issues. And of course, I can use the true parent as well uh, again and uh, see the result. Maybe for some reason you need to uh, change the chain, join chain and so on and so forth. OK. The next um, quite considerable update, uh, con considerable update as well is a mirror extra function. What does it do? Usually when we are creating skeletons, of course, we need to mirror joints. Usually we select entire joint chains and mirror them to the other side. Maybe I can select the arm joint chain, the leg joint chain, maybe some face joints that are supposed to be mirrored to the other side. But often we encounter the issue when you have already created the skeleton. Maybe you have already skinned it. Maybe you have already skinned the, the part of the skeleton. Mm -hmm. And you can just uh, select the existing joint chain, delete it if it has uh, skinning on it. It's a very tedious uh, and troublesome process. But maybe uh, you want to add joint here to this joint chain. And you want the same joint on the other side as well. What should we do? We can select the joint chain, create joint inside using inside joints without uh, any additional transforms, just in order not to have additional transform uh, nodes. Again, we are inside the group. This skeleton is um, scaled. If you use the standard Maya tools, you're going to have this additional transform with uh, transformations. Let's move it. Uh, we can make it make it red. Uh, we can make it bigger. Then I'm going to create another joint inside. Move it. Offset it. Maybe you need something like this. It doesn't really matter at this point. Then we can apply naming, whatever. And then I can do the same for this joint. Yep, something like this. Mm -hmm. Then you need uh, to do the same on the other side. I can uh, uh, press the mirror extra button. You have this uh, window open. Actually, it seems rather easy. So essentially, these parameters that you see here with the L and R sides are exactly the same as uh, the same parameters in the um, mirror joint options in the standard Maya tool. Moreover, they actually synchronize. So if you change the parameter in one tool, it's going to be updated in uh, another one. But it's not important here. There is a far more interesting thing to talk about. Of course, it's important for these prefixes, prefixes, uh, prefixes to be the same on the joints that you created. So not like left or anything else, just L and R in my case, but it's very, very, very crucial for these uh, prefixes, uh, prefixes to be the same on the parent joints of the joints that you have created, meaning that uh, for the parent joint we'll have arm L low, so we also have this, uh, in this case it's suffix uh, L, so it has to be the same as on the created joints. It is highly important because this prefix uh, or suffix is going to be used to uh, for tracking the other side, so the same joint on the other side. So just pay the special attention to this one. Okay, let me finally show you. Let's select, specify prefaces, uh, mirror. We'll have our newly created joints on the other side. Let's maybe try uh, du duplicating these joints, uh, joint chains again, create a few more. Let me delete uh, these ones. Let's say we have like a lot of different joints, mirror extra. You see, these are also mirrored, which is great. So essentially, to summarize, what do we do? Um, for the main joints, main joint chains, we still use multi-mirror function, 
but if you need to create additional joints after skinning or just small corrective joints or something like that you should use the mirror extra function and i would say that's it uh, that's all about the updates for the current version iteration of the joint optimal pro tool